Welcome to Maths with EJD. In this video, I'll be starting to talk about scientific computing with Python. You know, this talks about the different areas, the different ways in which you can actually, um, you know, do some computational tasks in different areas, in different fields like physics, like mathematics, engineering, and so on and so forth. But for the most part, I'll be focusing on, uh, you know, mathematics because, I mean, that in turn flows into other aspects. So this first video is about introduction to scientific computing with Python. Okay. So um, it, the outline, we'll be looking at the overview of scientific computing. We'll be looking at the overview of Python programming language itself. Then we'll talk about the importance of Python in scientific computing. Then we'll look at basic syntax and structure of Python code. Then we'll talk about Python scientific computing libraries. And of course, we have a conclusion because this is just an introduction because we're going to uh, go deeper into these things uh, as we make more and more videos. All right, so first of all, what is scientific computing? As you can see, scientific computing involves the use of advanced computing capabilities to solve complex scientific problems. It encompasses a wide range of activities, including mathematical modeling, numerical analysis, and computer simulations, all right? And then the goal is to understand and solve problems in various scientific disciplines, such as physics, chemistry, biology, engineering, and social sciences. So it's more like scientific computing is the combination of mathematics and computer, computer science together to solve problems in various aspects um, of endeavor, okay? All right. So what are some components of scientific computing? First of all, we talk about mathematical models, right? Mathematical models actually represent real world systems through mathematical equations and formulas. So, I mean, every simple equation you have ever come across, for, for instance, something like f of x equals x squared, ax squared plus bx plus c, that is already a model on its own, right? So, you know, we are going to deal with things like that a lot, how to solve different types of equations and when things get very advanced you know uh, uh, you know I've, I've made a course on matrices already right so here to at some point to be using uh python to do some computation with matrices then we're going to be talking about al algorithms those are step by step by step procedures for calculations data processing and automated reasoning so i mean uh we are going to so yeah, from the codes you'll be seeing, from, from the Python codes you'll be seeing, you'll be seeing step-by-step -step approaches to solving specific problems. For instance, if you have to, you may want to write a code to solve uh, uh, quadratic equations, you know? So we are going to have an algorithm and that will come from the place of understanding what a quadratic equation is about and all that. Then of course, we talk about simulations, which is about running models on computers to study their behavior under various conditions. So as you vary parameters, we want to see how the model behaves, all right? So with that, let's talk about the overview of Python programming language. Now, there are all kinds of programming languages out there. You know, you talk about C++, C Sharp, uh, even C, there's something like C, of course, and there are also uh, things like MATLAB, you know, in it, technically you can consider them as programming languages somehow, you know, you have, um, you can consider R also, and then you have Python, you have Fortran, and all of those. So, but what advantage does Python have over all of these things? Why am I sticking to this? Because, I mean, I've, I've interacted with MATLAB for, for some time, and then I switched to Mathematica, and then I'm working with Python now. And Python, by far, is the easiest of the languages from my experience, though. But, of course, you know, other program, other languages can be more useful, depending on what, what exactly you're doing, you know? So Python is actually a high level interpreted programming language and it is simple and readable, very simple and readable. So the idea of high level means that the way you write Python codes is very close to how you speak your English from day to day, right? Compared to maybe things like C Sharp and Fortran that you may require you to do some more hard stuff. I mean, some harder stuff, right? So Python is high level, so it's very easy to, very close to human language. And of course, Python supports multiple programming paradigms, including object-oriented, imperative, and functional programming. You know, the idea of object-oriented programming is taking things in layers and so on. So Python is that flexible and it can adapt to whatever thing you want to do. And it, it is so interesting that Python can be, it's used for 
anything. I mean, Python can be used for scientific computing, like we are, we are going to be looking at a series of videos here. It's useful for data analysis. It's useful for machine learning. It's useful for, for web design, you know? So Python is that versatile. So if you want to learn Python, the question is, what do you want to use it for? And that will determine the kind of libraries you get to interact with. So another thing is that Python syntax is designed to be intuitive and expressive. So once you see a Python code, even as a first time, you may already have an idea what the code is doing. It's that straightforward. And then it has a large and active community of developers contributing to its extensive ecosystem of libraries and frameworks. So you can easily have uh, groups on social media, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, everywhere where people get, talk about Python, where you can, if you have a problem, you can actually get it resolved. And of course, an icing on the cake, with the coming of AI, a, a generative AI like Pi, like um, Chat GPT, uh, Germany, uh, like um, Claude AI, and um, you know all those. With all of these things now, you, you know anything you want to do in any kind of programming language becomes way easy if you know how to use all these um, artificial intelligence tools. So things are easier these days if you know what to do. Of course, the next thing is, of in a way, I've also implied the importance of Python in scientific computing, right? Like the, its advantage over other languages. So key advantages will be the simplicity and clean syntax. And with that, it lowers the barrier to, for, for, to entry for scientists and researchers. So even if, you're, if this is your first time you are interacting with any kind of programming language at all, and this is your first video that you have ever seen on Python, I can assure you that if you follow through these ideas, you can you you can actually become an expert at least in this area of scientific computing that I'm talking about, and then that can actually be a ladder for you to go into maybe things like data analysis, data science, stroke machine learning, and things like that. So another thing is that Python has a vast array of libraries and frameworks specifically tailored for scientific computing tasks. So just like I said before, now you know our focus here is scientific computing but if it comes to data analysis there are tools there are python libraries and frameworks for that if you want uh okay for instance now uh, in scientific computing we'll be using scipy uh, numpy scipy simpy you are going to see all of those later and of course we'll be talking about visualization right uh where we'll be using matplotlib and seaborn and of course if you're doing something like um, web design so there you'll be hearing about things like django flask if you are doing data analysis, then of course you'll be talking about NumPy and Pandas like that. And of course the visualization part too. Then if you're talking about machine learning, then you'll be talking about scikit-learn and things like TensorFlow and so on and so forth. So it all depends on whatever it is you want to do. So I'm talking about the integration and community, right? Python seamlessly integrates with other languages like C slash C++, Fortran, and even R. So you can, you can integrate Python with any of these programming languages even MATLAB, right? So Python has a large and active community, so community support providing extensive documentation and support. So these are things you stand to benefit from, you know, from using Python. Okay. So talking about the basic syntax of Python, right? Basic syntax and structure of Python code. So most of the times to write a Python code, you, first of all, you need to import libraries. So the libraries you import will, will, de will be de determined by what you want to do. And I've told you different, uh, some examples of libraries for specific tasks you may want to do. So after doing that, they may define your function or what exactly you want to do, and then you can execute it and get some results. Of course, we are going to be doing that all the way here. So you're going to encounter things following this structure a whole lot, right? So what? So let, let's focus now on the kind of uh, libraries will be uh, like Python libraries will be focused will be using for scientific computing. So that's why here we are looking at Python scientific computing libraries. So you can see all of them: NumPy, SciPy, not SimPy. They are all Py, Py, Py. So NumPy, for instance, is numerical Python. And what does it do? It provides efficient array operations and mathematical functions. For instance, you are working with like a hundred by hundred matrix. You know, most issues are be are best. Uh, reduced to matrix for easy handling. So if you are dealing with a large dimension matrix like that, NumPy with, is going to be of help to you. Then of course you have SciPy. SciPy, SciPy is scientific Python. What does what this do, does is 
it adds additional functionality for scientific computing tasks such as optimization and signal processing. So you, you can do a bit more advanced things than what NumPy will do. And of course, for a mathematician like me, right? And you know, um, so symbolic. We, we get to work with symbolic stuff like uh you know when you are integrating and differentiating and all that you may never have to interact with numbers you just have symbols you know uh so that's why you also have simpy which is symbolic python this facilitates symbolic mathematics and algebraic equations for instance if I, if you have to solve 4x squared plus x plus one you know equals zero that you can get a clear direct answer and you can easily do that using something like scipy you know a, a, a numpy but if you have ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero and you have to solve that you know that in that case that is symbolic right so simpy becomes useful in that situation and of course um we like to visualize things just like they say that a picture speaks more than a thousand words so what you'll be try to what you can try to explain to someone in 10 minutes you can a picture a picture can get it done in one minute okay so we'll also be looking at some visualization and uh, the top two tools will be matplotlib and seaborn there are many more but these are the things i'll be focusing on here uh, so for matplotlib right it produces publication quality figures for data visualization and of course seaborn which builds on matplotlib uh, so it builds a map to provide attractive and informative statistical graphics. So with Seaborn, you get things become a, a bit more statistical and a bit more beautiful, you know. So we'll be looking at all this. So in conclusion, right, Python offers a powerful and accessible platform for scientific computing. Thanks to its simplicity, versatility, and extensive ecosystem. So if you can leverage Python's libraries and tools, you can, uh, as a scientist and a researcher, you can tackle complex computational tasks efficiently and effectively. Now, to get started, right, uh, you need to be able to install Python. So the easiest way uh, for me, especially for starters, when you get more advanced, you know more advanced things. So, but for now, the easiest way is uh, you, you install Python through Anaconda. And in Anaconda, you have all kinds of things you can use for Python. You have like, for instance, you have Spider, you have Jupyter Notebook. But we are going to use Jupyter Notebook a lot for now. You know, well, as you advance, you may see the need to use more advanced, uh, uh, you know, what you call IDEs, that's Integrated Development Environment. That is the environment where you write your code. So just like I said, the one we'll be using a lot here would be Jupyter Notebook. And after afterwards, we can begin to talk about, um, you, you know, along the line, you can talk about things like Visual uh, VS, VS Codes. You can talk about, um um spider you can talk about pie charm and all that so you can it all depends on what you want to do so something very close to jupyter notebook will be google collaboratory and you know these ones they are like web-based things and they are very simple they are particularly good uh for, for somebody like me who teaches these things a lot so uh, th those kind of environments are good for me because as you're going to see in the next video i'll be talking about jupyter notebooks and if you understand jupyter notebooks you can easily use google collaboratory and we, so in, in Jupyter notebooks, you can have, uh, you know, you can you can write codes, you can you can plot graphs, you can you can do all manners of things, you know. So as we are going to see very soon. So the action point is check this, the description box in this video for how to install Python via Anaconda. So I'm going to put give you a step by step guide on how to do that. I mean, as it as a text. All right. So watch out for that in the description and then install it and then get ready for what we'll have to do next. Because from the next video, we'll start to use uh, Jupyter Notebook, uh, you know, so it's important to have installed it by that time. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you have not subscribed to this channel, be sure to do that. Um, subscribe. And of course, hit the notification bell so you can get alerted each time I share a new video. And of course, you don't want to forget to comment. You, want, you, don't want to, you also want to like and share with others that these things may be useful for. See you in the next video.